Hello, Chaitali. Are you there? Uh, yes, Onu, sir. Yeah, Chaitali, we are starting or do we need to wait for some time? Uh, we will be waiting for some time. As participants are still joining, no? so we'll wait for four or five minutes and we'll start. I will give the intro and then you can go ahead with the webinar. Sure, sure. Okay.
Hi guys, uh, please note we are waiting for the other participants, those who are joining. Like I can see the number of uh, participants are there in the lobby, they are joining in. So we'll wait for them. Uh, till that time, I have shared the blog for this topic, which has been written by one of our trainer, uh, Mr. Chandrasekhar Deshpande. So you can go through the link, you can go through the blog till that time. Also, I will be sharing the social media platforms in the chat box. You can go and follow us over there. We do provide the information on the upcoming emerging technology webinars on our social media platforms. So make sure you follow us over there. OK, so let's get started with the webinar now. Uh, good morning to all and welcome you all to this emerging technology webinar on open AI prompt engineer and prompt architecting or new lucrative skill. Uh, Chaitali, yeah, your host for this webinar. I will be there to help you out throughout this webinar. So make sure if you have any queries, questions related to topic or related to the inquiry which you want to ask, you can just put it in the chat box. We are there to help you out. Then talking about the event sponsor, uh, Synergetics. So Synergetics is India's most distinguished learning company in IT technology. Uh, we are ready with our top class learning solutions that can be fit in every requirement across every industry around the globe. Here you can see our expensive greenfield solutions, which includes a persona based onboarding, onboarding add-on, certification, certification add-on. Then we have reskilling, emerging technology training, certification hackathon, uh, cloud adoption, latest technology training, sales pre-sales training, practice playbook and architecting solutions. 
So today's topic comes under the Emerging Technology Training Solution. Then today's webinar is organized by the ETC community, that is Emerging Technology Community, and sponsored by Synergetics and Microsoft. Uh, so our ETC community is open to all the people who are interested in emerging technologies. You just need to follow us on our meetup group, which is an emerging technology community. Uh, for that, you have to install the meetup app on your phone or on your device and just follow us over there. You will get the updates on the upcoming emerging technology trainings workshop, which we do. I will share the link uh, for this uh, meetup uh, community in the chat box later on. Then code of conduct, please note, no one is allowed to take the screenshot of the training and cannot do the screen recording. Also, if you have any technical question related to the topic, you can just use the chat box to ask your question. And after this webinar, if anyone needs the recording uh, for this webinar, uh, simply subscribe to our YouTube channel. We will be posting this recording over there. So you can get the access on our, on your email ID where we'll be sharing this link. Also, you can get the access on our official YouTube channel. Then today's speaker for this webinar is Mr. Sonu Satyadas. He's an MCT Microsoft certified trainer and practitioner. Then the agenda uh, for this topic. So we'll get an overview uh, of these um, of the emerging technology webinar which we are on. Also, guys, uh, please note I will be sharing the upcoming webinars, emerging technology webinar details in the chat box for you all. So if you want to register yourself for upcoming events or webinars related to the emerging technologies, you can go and register yourself. So I will be sharing the registration forms and details in the chat box for you. Also, uh, the links for the social media platforms like LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter and YouTube has been mentioned in the chat box. So make sure you follow us over there. We do update the relevant requirements or the emerging technology on this platform. So make sure you follow us on our social media platforms as well. <laughs> Thank you all. Thanks for been there for joining us over this webinar. Now I would like to hand over the mic to the speaker so she he can go ahead with the webinar. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Chaitali. Okay, I hope I'm audible to all of you and uh, uh i think you are able to see my screen so myself sonu satyadas uh, working as a practitioner for uh, synergetics it's mostly working on the ai technologies uh, open source and uh, cloud in today's uh, webinar we are discussing primarily about the Prompt engineering. So, what is prompt and completions? The transformation model, the components of prompts and the best practices, the prompt engineer roles, skills, and responsibilities, and some of the uh, prompt engineering related use cases and other techniques that we discuss. So, what is prompt engineering? But before understanding that, we have to understand what is generative AI. Because the prompts are primarily used in generative AI. Generative AI is a class of artificial intelligence algorithms used in unsupervised machine learning. So we are using different kinds of machine learning models or artificial intelligence models in our daily life. 
maybe directly or indirectly we are using them. Uh, very simply, if you use uh, the camera of your mobile phone, the camera is able to detect the faces uh, of the persons when when you take a photo. You can tag those faces with the names of those people. These are happening with the help of artificial intelligence. But yes, we are not using any kind of prompts for uh, tagging these faces or detecting these faces. This is not a generative AI model. But generative AI models are special type of artificial intelligence models where we can provide some kind of prompt or text inputs or some other kind of inputs through which we can generate some output data. The generative term refers to the AI's ability for generating new data samples such as images, text, audio, or other type of information. So mostly you must, some of you must have already used this chat GPT kind of uh, models where you can provide some text inputs uh, which then generates a set of uh, informations. So you will be asking the AI model to do some action or to solve some problem, or you will ask to generate some data and the AI model is able to go and uh, provide that output or it is providing that information as an, a response. A prompt is the input that the user provides to instruct the model about what type of content uh, uh, they want or the model needs to generate. Suppose if you use an AI model like uh, GPT, chat GPT, you can tell the model that I want to create a blog or I want to generate an email or I want to create a presentation. So the input text that you are providing to the model is called the prompt. So every user is familiar with the Google search engines. There also we are providing the search text, but we will not call it as a prompt. We will call it as a search text. So how the search text is different from the uh, prompt in the AI models? The search text is simple uh, keywords or text, anything that the search engine picks some words from that and then find out the relevant information or related information from the internet and give to you. But when you use an AI model like a chat GPT or GPT models or DAL-E or any kind of other AI models, generative AI models, it is very important to provide the input in a particular uh, standard with a, a clarification. So how you provide the input accordingly, the output generated by the model varies. So if you provide a clear cut information or clear cut instruction, the AI model will be able to understand it correctly and provide correct responses that you expect. So generating or creating this prompts in a proper way is very, very critical in uh, using the generative AI models. The prompt can be a question or it can be a statement or it can be some other kind of uh, uh, information or text. The model is used to understand what you are expecting from it and then accordingly it generates the response. Or it may be a continuation of the conversation. So I'll show you how the context uh, is used to understand uh, or continue the conversation. So for example, if you are asking the AI model to write a sh short story about a mysterious island, 
you can give that as a question or as a statement or some other uh, kind of text input so sometimes you need to provide some question so i you, you have a doubt or you want to ask something to the ai model so you provide it as a question or sometimes you want to provide a statement and the ai model is expected to generate some detailed information about that statement right so how you provide this prompt to the ai model is very very important that's called prompt engineering understanding how to craft effective prompt is essential in eliciting desired outputs from the generative ai models as i mentioned it's very very important how you define those prompt choice of words context and structure in prompt can significant significantly influence the generated content so in the prompt what are the different uh, uh, words that you use or how you construct the prompt is very very important because suppose if you are asking the uh, ai about a particular topic maybe you are asking about the uh, supernatural powers uh, so what is supernatural powers you are asking the ai model and the ai model can give you a higher level uh, 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 overview or higher level instructions uh, that what is it how it is and how it works all these things but if you are not able to understand you can tell the model by adding some extra keywords to the statement saying okay explain about the supernatural powers in simple layman statements so when you add the uh, words like a layman statements the ai model will regenerate the answer the context or content will be similar but it will be able to explain in a very simple statements which you can easily understand so adding some extra keywords or uh, uh, simple statements to the prompt can change the response or response model the open ai models that we use uh, today is all generative ai models these models can accept some prompt and uh, can produce some response and some of these models are even customizable with fine tuning the models are adaptive to understand conversation even if sentence has grammatical and spelling mistake that means when you provide the prompt if the prompt has contain some grammatical or spelling mistake these models are capable to understand it correctly and uh, correct those statements before it start processing so some of the open ai models generative ai models that we use today is gpt models dal e whisper embeddings and moderation so gpt is one of the most popular model that we use it's a set of models that that can understand and generate the natural language the version 3.5 is the is improved to understand and generate the code also means there are different versions or uh, models available under the gpt gpt 3.0 gpt 3.5 and the latest gpt 4 also it is able to generate the natural language text like how you expect a human being to generate the text the same way the model is able to produce the result dal e is a model that can generate and edit the images given a natural language text called as prompt so when you give a prompt based on the prompt it will draw an image for you so you can tell the model saying that i want to draw the image of an elephant standing on top of a burger 
if you simply say that the dal e model can understand that you are expecting a picture of an elephant standing on top of a burger right so it will uh, draw such an image as an output but yes it is possible that you can also provide some extra information we understand here this prompt contains a primary content what is the primary content that you provide in the prompt that you want to draw the picture of an elephant standing on top of a burger right so that is a primary content but additionally you can provide some informations to help the model to generate the image such as draw this picture in an artistic model or a real picture or maybe something like that okay so it will be understanding that okay you are expecting an artistic uh, picture or you are looking for a real life picture or a real picture kind of thing not a computer generated model picture so you are giving some extra informations along with the uh, main content which helps the model to understand it better and produce the result as expected whisper is another model that it's a general purpose speech recognition model that can perform speech recognition translation and language detection so it's also part of the ai it's a simply a speech uh, model that is used to uh, recognize the voice translate it and uh, uh understand the language or detect the language embeddings are the model used to represent the text as numerical values that can be used to measure the relatedness between the two pieces of text it's more used in the text processing and the moderation is a model used to moderate the contents to determine whether the content contains any kind of uh, 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 what hate threatening self harm or sexual violence contents so you can moderate the contents using the moderation model in open ai but out of these models some of these models uses prompts like a dal e or gpt they accept the prompt from the user means simply text inputs and then understand what the user is expecting as a response and produce the result the prompt is the text request to ai model which in turn uh, which in return generate a res uh, text response called as completion so these are some technical words that we use in uh, the prompt engineering the prompt is the input text that you are providing to the model and the model is providing a response which is called as completion the models built on transformer architecture are prompt based models so what is transformer model we will discuss uh, in the coming slides it's a kind of uh, a artificial intelligence uh, uh, model or category uh, that we use to design the ai models that is uh, gpt gpt 3.5 or gpt 4 all these uh, are built using this transformer model prompt based models are sensitive to prompt construction which makes a prompt construction critical so i have told that the prompt construction is very very important because a single word in the prompt can change the response or the type of response for example very simply if you say i want to if you want to generate a list of uh, fruits so you can say please generate a list of fruits so it will simply generate the list of fruits list of fruits but if you add the word like uh, please generate a list of or bulleted list of fruits so it will be generating a numbered or oh, sorry a bulleted uh, list of uh, fruits 
So that means the output format can be different when you add an extra keyword in the prompt. So even a single word can go and change the response. Different models may show different behavior on the same prompt. Like if you provided this uh, prompt, like uh, generate uh, a list of uh, fruits. If you use this prompt for GPT-3, it may produce a result which may be different from GPT-3.5 result because different models understand and produce the results in a different way because they understand the prompt in different way. A prompt engineering involves crafting specific and carefully worded instructions or inputs to guide a generative AI model's output in a desired direction. So how you construct this prompt is simply called as prompt engineering. And it is very, very important how you design this prompt. So later we will see some examples. So how the behavior of the model can be changed with the prompts, with examples and cues. It's like giving the AI a set of guidelines or cues to influence the type and style of the response you want from the model. So you uh, provide the prompt. In the prompt, you can also provide some cues, means a simple hints that you uh, can help the model to understand better what you are expecting. The art of prompt engineering lies in understanding how to phrase prompts to get desired accurate and creative output from the AI. And the prompt engineering may not apply equally to all models. As I mentioned earlier, the prompt uh, will be understood by different models in different ways. So the prompt engineering is not applicable to all models in the same way. Because every model is trained with a different set of data, with a different uh, capabilities or different uh, type of uh, algorithms. So the prompt engineering that you use for one model may not be applicable or suitable for another model. So that is very important. So when you uh, do the prompt engineering, you have to first understand for what type of model or which model you are going to use or you are going to apply this prompt engineering. It includes writing, testing, and redefining the prompts to streamline user interaction to create intuitive and a, a seamless experience for user interacting with AI powered applications. So when you create an AI model or when you use an AI model, you will be writing uh, the prompts and you train those models with those prompt and it will be generating the results and even using those results, it can learn itself. So that is called in-context learning, which we'll discuss later. So from the inputs that you provide, it will learn itself. From the responses, it will learn itself and then provide better results in the future. The transformer-based model. So GPT is a transformer-based model. In the previous slides, I have mentioned uh, GPT is, is based on the transformer model. So what is this transformer model? So GPT is based on transformer architecture, which is a neural network architecture that has proven to be highly effective in various natural language processing tasks. It involves multiple layers of attention mechanisms and feed forward neural networks. So when uh, we use the GPT models, it internally process the prompt that we are providing. 
using a model or architecture that process the prompt into uh, tokens or that is converting this prompts into tokens and it process those tokens so a token may be a word or maybe a group of characters in the word so the 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 prompt that you are providing as an input to the model is first converted into tokens and it will be processed in various levels it is uh, providing the uh, it is converting the uh, prompts into tokens and then assigning the weightage to the tokens and finding the relate relatedness with the other uh, statements or other uh, words within the uh, uh, prompt and then it is identifying the meaning of that statement so it's a feed forward mechanism which means uh, from input to output it's uh, it's a one way direction process so that means the uh, the input which is generated from one uh, word is used as the input for the next one so it is uh, using the output of the previous process as an input to the next uh, process so that means it's a uh, uh, input to output processing is an one way directional processing that sometimes process the data in parallel or in sequence the pre training and fine tuning it's the initially the model undergoes pre training on massive data sets that includes a wide range of internet text so like any other models whether it is a generative ai model or a non generative ai model before pub publishing them to the public the model will be trained using a large amount of data so here in transformation models like gpt also it's trained with a large set of uh, internet text because it is primarily a prompt based model or transformation model its a uh, primary input is text so it is processed or it is uh, trained with a massive amount of internet text data to understand what how it is processing that uh, prompt during this pre training phase the model learns to predict the next word in the sentence understanding the sentence and context and semantic relationships so this transformation model helps the uh, ai model to predict the next word because when you uh, go to the next examples we will see whenever you give a, a particular uh, in case of chat chat completions when you provide a particular prompt it will provide a, another uh, text as a response so that is called the completion so you are providing one uh, prompt and it will be providing another uh co content as a response which is called the completion and when you provide some uh, longer statements it will be able to understand the uh, meaning of that particular statement it will be able to remember the context so suppose currently you are talking about a particular uh, uh, entity or particular uh, object and the following questions when the uh, interaction happens the following questions when you ask you don't need to go and repeat that you are talking about this particular object because the model is able to remember the context that related uh, uh, regarding which topic or regarding which object you are uh, talking at this point of time it will be able to remember the context of the conversation so you don't need to go and provide the context information each and every time when you interact with the uh, models or the ai models prompt based generation gpt 3.5 generates human like text in response to given prompt as we know we can uh, 
interact with the GPT model, that is chat GPT model. When you give a prompt, it is able to generate a uh, response, just like the humans are creating the text. You will not, you won't believe that it is generated by AI. A user inputs uh, a starting text or question as a prompt and the model generates a continuation based on the context provided. As I mentioned, when you provide an input based on the current context, the AI model is capable to generate the completion text. So we'll see in the demo what is that prompt and how it is generating the completion text. Generative capabilities of uh, GPT. It's a generative model, meaning that it can generate text that is coherent and contextually relevant. It doesn't simply retrieve information, but generates new unique responses. So each and every time when you give a prompt, it is not just copying as, uh, or uh, copy pasting the static text. Or suppose as a user, if I am asking about a particular uh, object. So if I'm asking, OK, how the uh, photosynthesis works. So I'm getting an answer. But when another user asks about the same photosynthesis, he will be also getting the response, but not the same uh, as the one which I got. Because each and every time when the model generates a text, it is a unique text as a new ge newly generated text. So mostly the the uh, uh, content will be similar content in the sense the message will be similar in both, but the formation of the response or the uh, uh, the way that it is expressing the output it will be different. So when I ask about the photosynthesis, it will be generating the result in one way and when the other person asks the same thing it will be generating the result in a different way but the uh, content will be almost similar even if a single user is going to regenerate the text about a particular thing it will be always generating a new response for example if you go to the chat gpt And here, if you are asking, so suppose uh, you are giving a prompt, something like uh, explain about the uh, uh, code. So I'm just uh, asking a question and I'm getting a response, something like this. So here it is generating a new text. So once the response is received, you can see it is just like a human generated text. But if I go and regenerate, means it is going to generate the answer for the same question again. It will be a different. So if you look into the uh, answers, if you see it will be uh, different. Mostly the, the content will be similar, but it is formatting the text, the framing of answers, everything will be different. So each time when you generate the answer or generate the output for a given prompt, it will be always generating a new response. Ethical and responsible use. The open AI and the broader AI community emphasize the responsible use of such powerful language models to mitigate potential risks associated with misinformation, biased responses, and harmful content generation. So, yes, uh, it is uh, very, very important if you, uh, if you are uh, learning the uh, AI, the primary thing that you need to learn is the responsible AI principles because it is very imp important for a uh, for an AI developer to understand the 
uh, AI principles that you should not go and uh, expose the personal information. There should not be any bias uh, uh, based on the caste, religion, color, or anything. So there are lots of uh, principles that you have to follow. So when you uh, use this models, the open AI models are responsible to uh, provide us uh, security for the user uh, information. It uh, does not show any kind of bias between uh, users based on the cast, legion, location, or anything. Or even it does not provide any harmful information. So if you go and ask the uh, GPT model, so how to generate a uh, or how to create a bomb, so you will not get the answer. It will be uh, smart enough to tell you that uh, according to the AI principles, it is not possible to provide such kind of information because it will be harmful for others, right? Or if, if you are asking the model that how to simply hack a system, it won't give you answers for that. It is smart enough to understand that you are asking uh, something that will that may harm others, so it won't provide answers for that. So these GPT models are responsible to uh, keep things very secure, uh, generating not the harmful information. So it's uh, it's it's a uh, uh, the using this transformation based model to understand the prompt very efficiently, understanding the relationship between the tokens, tokens in the sense the word in, within the prompt, and uh, understanding the meaning of this prompt correctly and providing uh, re relevant response to the users. Recurrent neural networks or RNNs. Recurrent neural networks and the transformation models are two distinct architectures used in natural language processing and the sequence related tasks. So, recurrent neural networks is another way of uh, processing the uh, prompts. Uh, just like a transformation model, this is another uh, way of processing the prompts in AI models, or it is also used in the uh, NLP systems. But sometimes we uh, use this RN, R, R, RNN like mechanisms. We will use uh, within this transformation models, or we incorporate these two models to enhance the capabilities of the AI system. So. Uh, Maybe if, if GPT is using the transformation models, in some scenarios, it may need to use the uh, features of RNN models because RNN model is primarily uh, used to process sequential uh, sequences of data, like uh, sentence for formations or sentence series data, time series data processing. So these kind of uh, scenarios, it will be using the RNN models because it is more into sequential data processing. Okay, so in uh, transformation models, it uh, does not do that. It will uh, execute the prompt or it will understand the prompts and process the prompts in parallel. So it will be dividing these prompts into tokens and processing those tokens parallelly, identifying the dependencies between these tokens uh, in parallel. But in RNN model, it is processing the uh, prompt in sequence. The RNN mod, uh, RNNs are designed to handle sequences of data such as sentences, time series data, audio and video frames, because all these are sequential data where the processing needs to be in sequential. Each element in the sequence is processed once uh, at a time and the RNN maintains a hidden state that retains information from previous elements in the sentence. So the RNN models or RNN uh, networks, it's just process the uh, input data, which is uh, uh, more into a sequential type where the sentences, because 
one sentence's uh, connectivity is related to its a previous sentence. So sentences processed in sequential. Time series data is processed in sequential. Audio or video frames needs to be processed in sequential. So we cannot go and do processing of such data in random order or parallel. So the output which is generated from one state is passed to the next and it is maintaining the state uh, 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 of the previous processing to uh, continue the execution of the next uh, statement. So or whenever you process the data in uh, sequential order, the, it uh, maintains the state of information about the previous uh, elements. So how these uh, elements are gets processed, it is maintaining a hidden state of uh, uh, that retaining the information about the elements in the sequence. But it has some limitation because RNN processes a sentence word by word in sequence. As I have mentioned, it is simply a sequential processing. So it has uh, limitations in parallel processing. So it does not uh, process the data in parallel. And so that it is not capable to process very large set of uh, inputs because it uh, takes more time and it will not be able to remember the context for a long period of time. So because if you are providing a very lengthy text, it will not be able to remember the uh, context information for a long period of time. So uh, uh, the RNN models are simply used in very simple statement processing or uh, which, is, which is very not very large set of data. Such cases we can use the RNN models. It limits uh, capturing uh, limits capturing long range dependencies. So in transformation models, it's not a problem because any uh, large kind of input text can also be processed by uh, transformation models because it uh, do the processing in parallel and it is able to remember the dependencies, uh, long range dependencies, uh, like a long shot or mid uh, uh dependencies can be uh, remembered or stored in the state of transformation models but in 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 R R N N models it uh, limits the capturing of long range dependencies when it talk about the transformation models the transformation architecture was uh, introduced uh, uh, first in the paper titled uh, Attention is All You Need, which is published by Ashish Waswani and a team of researchers uh, from Google Brain in uh, 2017. So there the transformation architecture is first introduced and it's a deep learning model based on the self-attention, which is also called the intra-attention mechanism. What is this self-attention mechanism? Because the transformation model is a deep learning machine model or deep learning model that uh, uses the self-attention mechanism. The self-attention mechanism I have explained already that it divide the input text into tokens. So what is a token? A token can be a single word or it may be a group of characters within the word. Means if the uh, word is very large, then it will be dividing that word into multiple tokens, something like a hamburger. So if you say hamburger, so ham may be a one token, burger may be another token. So in, in, in larger words, it will be dividing that larger words into multiple tokens by grouping the characters. But in some cases, a single word completely can be considered as a token. It gives weightage to each word as, as per the relevance. So based on the relevance, it is giving a weightage to each word. Because as I mentioned, when you give a prompt for searching, what is your main content? And what is the hint or cue that you are providing? So it will be giving weightage to this differently. 
for example if you are saying okay i want to generate the uh, uh, information about photosynthesis generate as a slide so if you are saying i want to get the information about photosynthesis so the word photosynthesis will get more weightage because that is your main content and you are giving a hint saying that you want the result like a slide or maybe a uh, uh, blog or something like that so that is an additional information that you are providing so here the uh, weightage is given or more weightage is given to the main content that like a photosynthesis not to the blog so if more weightage is given to the blog then it, it will be focusing on generating it as a blog or a slide not on the topic photosynthesis so the model is capable to understand the uh, tokens and then giving relevant weightages for each uh, tokens then the capturing relationships and dependencies between the words or token so if you are saying uh, uh, something about the uh, photosynthesis uh, or some uh, other text information related to that so it will it will be able to understand the relationship between those two words like which is the main word and which is the supporting text it will be able to understand the relation between those uh, words so that is then uh, happen so after it is dividing the uh, text into tokens it will assign weightage to uh, those words as per the relevance and then identifying the relationship and dependencies between the words and tokens then attends to different parts of input sequence in more global or context aware manner so in this case when you converse with the model the model will be uh, aware about the context for example whenever you talk about uh, some uh, object or a topic the model will remember what is the context of, of this conversation and the subsequent tokens or subsequent prompts that you are providing will be uh, uh, related with the current context and then generating the answers for that for example i'll show you an example of that here i'm going to this uh, open ai gpt model so here i'll just uh, say that uh, explain the characteristics of python language so simply i'm just uh, giving a prompt and you can see it is understanding that currently we are asking about python so it is generating information about the python so it is saying that python is widely used and its features are explained so next next prompt which i'm providing is what is lambda expression so when i give this one you can see it is simply understand lambda expression is a concept used in python so i have not mentioned the python anywhere so if you go and check in internet so lambda expression is also available in other programming languages lambda expression if you talk it is available in uh, java it is available in dot net or it is available in python and many other languages so then how this uh, gpt is correctly understanding that i am talking about the lambda expressions in python because the previous question that i have asked is about python so it is understanding that currently we are discussing about the python language so the next question is obviously about the python as a context topic so here i'm just asking lambda expression and it is clearly saying that uh, 
lambda in python is used for so and so and it is what it is right so this is the context awareness that is the model is aware about the context and it is uh, uh, generating the results for the subsequent prompt based on the context information facilitates parallel computing and capture long range dependency effectively so when you provide a very uh, explanatory prompt a large prompt it will do the processing of the prompt parallel identifying the tokens uh, finding out the relationship between the words and it is also capable to identify the dependency between the uh, words uh, within this prompt gpt that is generative pre-trained transformer models are based on transformer architecture and they are providing the build, building blocks for the chat gpt and google's bard so chat gpt is the one which i have shown so it is using the transformer architecture to process the prompt that we are providing and even google's bard which is uh, another uh, gpt based model uh, which is also using the transformer architecture to process the prompt the transformer models and how it is different from the rnn so transformer models are proven to be highly effective in natural language processing because it is more capable to do processing of larger uh, input prompt that is larger text it is capable to do the processing in parallel and it is also able to remember about the context and it is also uh, identifies the dependencies and relationship between the words so that means for natural language processing the transformer models uh, models are highly effective than rnn consist of encoder and decoder where both consist of multiple layers of self attention and feed for uh, forward neural network when you see the architecture of a transformer model there is encoders and decoders so encoder as you see in the right side the functionalities of uh, encoder it uh, takes the uh, text input that is the uh, prompt as an input and then do the tokenization means dividing that into tokens so what is token also i have already explained and then doing the uh, assignment of weightage so assign the weightage for each token based on the relevance analyzes those words and performs a downstream task like a context summarization language generation sentiment analysis translation and many more so sometimes we have to do the language translation sometimes we have to identify in what context they are asking the question because the previous example which i have shown when i ask the question what is lambda expression it is very important to understand what is what the user is asking first of all it is identifies the prompt uh, is what is lambda expression so here the tokens which will be identifying is a lambda expression so lambda may be one token and expression is another token then it will be giving weightage for each word what is lambda expression so what will get a weightage is will get a weightage lambda will get a weightage and expression will get another weightage but more weightage will be given to lambda and expression and then it will analyze to understand what the word to, to understand is there any grammatical mistakes or spelling mistake or anything and then it will identify in what context he is asking about the lambda expression so the as per the current context i was discussing about the python language then it will understand that he is asking about the uh, uh, lambda expressions in the python language 
right? So those uh, uh, context summarization, language generation, sentiment analysis, sometimes we have to identify the sentiment, whether it is a positive or negative uh, statement. So sentiment analysis is also important. So that all done by the encoder. And the decoder is uh, using the context summary to generate the response from the model. Means once the model is generating the response, that response is generated with the help of decoder. These transformation models have completely revolutionized the natural language processing by architecting state of art performances on various fronts like machine translation, language understanding, text generation, and conversational AI. So these transformation models helped the AI systems to uh, became more uh, user-friendly and more effective. And now it is used in various uh, uh, applications and areas like uh, machine translation means simple language understanding text generation means generative generate generative ai is an example of uh, text generation because it it is capable to generate uh, uh, larger text also even uh, letters blogs uh, presentations and articles etc even conversational ais means the chat applications also we can use the transformation model based uh, uh, AI systems like uh, GPT. Transformation transformer over RNN. It's more efficient than RNN. It can be trained on larger set and process la longer sequence of text. So we have discussed uh, uh, that the RNN is not capable to uh, process very large text because uh, it will process the text in sequence and it will not be able to remember the dependencies for uh, means longer dependencies. It's more accurate than RNN can resolve long range dependencies between words more effectively. Because RNN has this limitation, uh, it cannot resolve long range dependencies between the words. But the transformer models are capable for doing that. More flexible than RNN, so can be used for wide variety of uh, natural language processing tasks like a machine translation and a text summarization. So it uh, is more capable uh, to do the text processing. So it is used in many NLP systems like a machine translations and text summarization. But in some of the uh, models or some of the areas, we are using the RNN models along with the transformation models to do the data processing. If you are an open AI user, to consume this open AI, we have to understand the uh, key concepts of uh, open AI primary thing is the API key. So whenever you interact with uh, an AI system like a chat GPT, you need to authenticate yourself to make request. Suppose if you want to send a prompt to the AI model like a chat GPT, you need to first authenticate with an API key. So when you create an account in chat GPT or the Azure OpenAI account, you will be getting an API key which can be used to authenticate yourself before uh, start consuming or start using the AI models. Prompt is another important concept which we have discussed so far. It is a simple text that we use to provide instructions to the models. Completion endpoint. So if you are a developer and you want to use the AI models, you have to send the re request to an HTTP endpoint. So these endpoints are called a completion endpoints. So you will be sending a prompt, means an input text, 
and the uh, model is re responsible to provide you a completion text. So here, uh, a very simple example, there is a prompt, something that you can give is a uh, write a tagline for the ice cream shop. So the completion, which means the response can be, we serve up smiles with every scoop. So that can be a response. A token is very, very important concept because the uh, if you are using a paid version of the models, uh, AI models, the cost is calculated based on how many tokens has been processed and also the input and output uh, size is uh, decided with, with the tokens limit that you specify in the request. So the open AI model understand and process the text by breaking down this text into tokens where the token can be a word or maybe a group of characters. Okay. The text from generated completion combined must be one or one must be uh, no more than the mod model's maximum context length. Okay, so if uh, you consume the GPT models, every GPT models has its own uh, maximum token length, like a GPT-3, if you are using, it has 2K as the token length, means 2000 tokens. But if you go for a GPT-4, it can go up to 32K. That means a very, very large size, the uh, set of tokens you can use, means larger number of tokens you can use. And another important parameter which we need to understand is the temperature. A temperature is also affecting the results generated by the AI models. It's a value that you can configure between 0 and 1. And uh, uh, when you set the value of the temperature, the result will be different. So for the same prompt, you may be getting different results based on the temperature value that you have configured. So higher the value, more innovative results are expected. Okay, maybe uh, beyond or out of the expectations, you will get the results. So more temperature value if you set, it's, it will be generating more innovative results uh, that it produce. So how the results need to be generated, that can be configured with the temperature value. Uh, that can set between 0 and 1. The models, the open AI models needs uh, to be specified while making the request. So because as I mentioned, there are different uh, models available in GPT itself. So GPT uh, 3, 3.5, uh, 4, GPT 3.5 itself is uh, uh, GPT 3.5 Turbo is there, GPT 3.5 Turbo 16K is there. So there are different models available and each model has different capabilities. So the GPT based on um, GPT 3 models, which are, which are available with the code names like a DaVinci, Curie, Babbage, Ada, and so on. So there are different models while consuming the uh, open AI models, you have to specify which model you are using. So in the demo, I'll be able to show you that. In context learning. In context learning is a technique used uh, with, that helps the model to understand from the, the uh, examples that you provide. So that means it is learn itself from the inputs that is provided. So a machine learning technique which undergoes a continuous learning process to adapt new information and produce more accurate predictions and responses by retraining the model in real time on the data generated in production. So when you uh, make a res uh, request to the AI model, you can also provide some examples 
to help the model to understand what is the type of result that you are expecting. So for example, if you are giving uh, a paragraph about a particular incident, the AI model it will be simply say, giving another paragraph as a response because it is simply says that uh, it is simply understand that the paragraph which is talking about an incident, maybe a simply uh, some natural calamities or maybe some uh, tragic incidents you can give as a paragraph. It is simply give a, another descriptive information as a response. But if you are providing some examples, uh, like uh, you are giving an incident that happens in sports and you are giving the response type as sports. That means an incident which has happened. For example, India won the World Cup in uh, 2011 and some information about that. And you are giving the answer which is expected is sports, which means that incident is a sports related incident. And then you are giving another example that you are giving maybe a, a political uh, uh, incident, maybe an election or election related something and then giving the uh, result as uh, politics, which means that incident is a political incident or politics related incident. So you have given two examples. That means you are giving a paragraph and you are expecting what category of incident it is. So first you have given a sports incident and you are telling the model that I am expecting the result like that it is sports. And another incident example you are giving that a political uh, incident that you have given and then it is uh, categorized or the solution or answer you have given as politics, which means you are not expecting another detailed paragraph about those incidents. You are expecting what category it is. So after that, when you uh, uh, give this uh, incident about the natural calamity, OK, maybe an earthquake or some other incident. When you give as a paragraph, the model will understand, OK, the previously he trained me that whenever I get a paragraph, I have to categorically say that this related to which type. So it will read the paragraph and understand that it is a natural calamity or a disaster and they simply give the answer it as disaster instead of giving a paragraph as a response. So I'll show you an example later. So here the self-learning models keep imbibing the data drift and automatically improve the accuracy and relevance because when, it, when you give the examples, you can tell the models that what kind of answer you are expecting. So you are uh, the, the responses that the model which is generating is more relevant to the user. So this, for this, we can follow some approaches which are few shots, one shot, and a zero shot. Few shot means the user include multiple examples uh, in the call, uh, call prompt that demonstrate expected answer used the con content. Number of uh, examples typically limited to the input size limitation of a model on a single prompt means you can provide some examples in the uh, prompt itself so that the model will be able to understand, okay, he is expecting such a result. So for the prompt which you are giving, it will be generating a similar result. One shot, it's the same as few shot, but it instead of giving multiple uh, examples, it will be providing a single example in the call prompt. And zero shot means no example is provided, but only the task request is provided. So you are not uh, telling what, uh, mean, mean, you are not giving an example. Instead of that, you are just uh, describing what is expected. So that is zero shot. So few shot, you can provide um, more than one examples in the prompt. In uh, one shot, you will be giving a single example in the prompt. And zero shot, you are not providing any examples 
but you are describing about the result that you are expecting. The prompt components. When you create the prompt, it is important to understand how you define the prompt because that is what prompt engineering you, you do. The prompt on submission gets divided and uh, and its text is converted to array of dictionary. So when you provide a prompt, it is primarily converted into an array of dictionary and each component of the conversation is associated with a role. So usually when for setting up the context, usually the uh, prompt contains a system or user or assistant related conversation. So the, when you specify the prompt, it will be by default a user prompt. But you can also set the system and assistant prompt to uh, uh, make the uh, what res responses more relevant to the user. <clears throat> a prompt must have at least one component means a, at least a user input must be there. So you, the system or assistant can be optional, but at least the user input is very important. So at least one should be there. I'll show you what, what is this means in the example. The input size is increasing with each generation of GPT models like a GPT-3 supporting up to uh, 2K, that is 2048 tokens while GPT-4 are supporting around 32K tokens. Why it is specified here? Because when you provide the uh, examples or the conversation components, conversations in the component, it also affect the number of tokens that we are consuming inside this request. So every request will be uh, using a specific amount of tokens and the tokens uh, used is used for calculating the cost. Suppose if you are using a paid version of this model, the uh, cost can be calculated based on the number of tokens you have used. So whenever you include the, con uh, the, the roles and the conversations in your prompt, it will increase the uh, uh, number of tokens that you are consuming in the request. The prompt components primarily there is an instruction an instruction to the model on what to do. So that is the primary information or instruction that you are providing. Like a write a summary on the given article. So that is the instruction you are giving. So I want to write a blog. Uh, so this is the instruction. And what is the content that you are providing? Like I want to write a blog on the uh, weather change uh, for, from last 50 years. So weather change from last 50 years is, will be your uh, primary content because you are going to write something about this content. So your instruction is very, very important because the uh, model is understanding what to do based on this model. So write a summary on the given article or write a blog on the given topic. So what to do is based on the instruction. Primary content contains the main information or a question or a topic that the prompt is focused on. It provides the core context of generating the relevant response that is discuss the impact of climate change on coastal regions. So you can also say that write a blog on the climate change on coastal regions. So you can say the climate change on coastal regions will be your uh, primary content. And the instruction is what you, what you, what you are expecting. That is you are expecting a blog or an article or something like that. If you want, you can also provide some examples. So in some scenarios, it is not mandatory to provide examples in every scenario, but it is also possible to provide examples uh, like uh, it is provided to guide the model in understanding the desired style, format, or structure of the response. A summary should be concise and capture uh, the main points without going into too much detail. So you can give a 
uh, example that uh, summary should be a uh, concise and capture that main points without going into too much detail. So the uh, model will be understanding that and generating the result. Cues are typically the hints or clue that you are embedding into the prompt so that you can decide what kind of responses the model is going to generate. Like the, for example, the instruction is compose a professional email declining a job letter. So that is the instruction that you are uh, giving because we want to write a professional email letter or email uh, declining the job offer. So you can give a cue that is a hint saying maintain a respectful and appreciate tone, uh, appreciative tone throughout the email, express gratitude for the offer and offer a reason for declining. So that means how the mail should be uh, formatted that you can specify inside the queue. Supporting contents also can be given. Supporting content provides additional information, context or background details to assist the model in generating well in informed and accurate response. Like uh, here is an article about climate change and uh, uh, its effect on biodiversity and you can provide a link. Please summarize the key point. So you can, you are providing the uh, input. So instead of the AI to generate the, the, the uh, content and then summarize it, you are providing that, okay, here is the link and uh, uh, that talk about the climate change and the its uh, effects in the bio biodiversity. And you just need to go and create a summary uh, about the key points in that article. So you are providing a supporting content there. So if you look into the example, so here you can see, here I have used uh, the Azure Open AI because in, in the sample code, I'm planning to use the Azure Open AI. So here what I have done, I have just uh, created an Azure Open AI model. So here is the Azure Open AI. It is providing the key and endpoint. So previously we have discussed whenever we make a request to the AI models, an authentication key is important. So here you can see there's a key, and here is the endpoint. So the completion endpoint. So this is what the endpoint that I'm using. And if you are using the Azure Open AI model, you have to specify which model you are planning to use. So there are different models available, but you have to go and deploy it, uh, deploy an instance of this model. So here, first you have to go to the Azure OpenAI Studio, and then you have to create a deployment. So here you can see what are the supported models. GPT 3.5 Turbo, GPT 3.4 Turbo 16K, GPT 3.5 Turbo Instruct, and Text Embedding ADA 002. So these are the different models currently available. So you can select one and then specify the uh, deployment name. So here I have already created one instance of GPT 3.5 Turbo. So that's the reason it is giving the warning or error. So you can specify the name of the deployment. As you can see here, I have already created one. So the model which I have selected is GPT 3.5 Turbo, and the deployment name is GPT 35 Text Turbo. So that is a name. Then inside my code, I can build the application to make a request to that model. For that, since I'm using Python, I have to install the open AI package for Python. So here I have installed the Python package that is pip install open AI is going to install the open AI package for Python. Then we have to configure the API endpoint and the key. So the API endpoint, which I have shown uh, in the Azure portal, we have to use. 
So here is the API key and this is what the endpoint I can use. So I have declared two variables holding this information. Then I'm importing the OpenAI package to the code. And uh, here we are configuring the OpenAI because we are using the OpenAPI type as Azure OpenAI. So you can specify the API type is Azure because it's Azure OpenAI and OpenAI API base URL, that is the endpoint which we have configured here. This is the base endpoint. And you can specify the API version and the API key. The API key is the above one which we have declared. Okay. So this is what configured. And later you can make a request. So here you can see I have given some examples here. So when I define uh, the prompt or when I make a request here, you can see I'm making a request to the chat completion endpoint. And I am specifying the engine which I'm using or the model which I'm using is GPT-35 Text Turbo. That is the model which I have deployed, right? So it's actually using which type of model? GPT-3.5 Turbo. And this is the name of the deployment which I can use here. And the message is the conversation that it contains the components like a role system. So this is a system uh, conversation or you are telling that the system that is the AI model is what kind of AI system it is. So content is you are a helpful assistant to provide support on Azure services. So I'm setting what kind of AI model it is. So when the system is uh, saying that it is uh, the assistant, that is the model or AI assistant is a helpful assistant that is providing the support for the Azure services. So this is uh, uh, setting its role, saying that it is a helper for Azure services. And the role user, I'm setting the content as the prompt content as does Azure OpenAI support customer managed keys? So I'm giving an example question because this is an Azure related question. So when I ask an Azure related question, the assistant that is the model is giving a response saying, yes, customer managed keys are supported in Azure OpenAI. So this is an example because here it is clearly mentioned that it is providing support for the Azure services. And I am asking an Azure service related question and the model is providing an Azure service related answer. So I have already set to the context. That means this is a Azure uh, support assistant and any Azure service related question I ask, it will be providing answer for that. So here you can see it is a customer support assistant so that whenever the user asks, whether it is possible or not, it will give yes or no answer with that explanation. So now I'm the user is asking the actual prompt that he is he wants to get the response. Is it possible to store the uh, Azure Open AI keys in the Azure Key Vault? That means the authentication keys can be stored in Azure Key Vault or not. So when I uh, make a request. So this is my message. Message I'm passing to the chat completion endpoint. When I make a request, you can see it is generating the result with the same format of the above, right? So the example which I have given is this. So this is the format I want the answer. So the current answer is also coming in this way. Yes, it is possible to store the Azure OpenAI keys in the key vault. That way you can surely securely manage your keys and control access to them. Right, so it is giving explanation for that as well. Right. So this is how the examples are configured. And that will set the context so that we will get the results in the similar format. And here you can see 
this is another example that we are setting. So this here we are setting the roles of the conversation. We are setting the context and here the examples we are setting. So whenever we uh, want to translate a text, so translate the following English to uh, te uh, English text to French. So this is what the instruction. So in the here we have seen what is the instruction. So the instruction is we have to translate the following English uh, text to French. And here are some examples given that is this is the input and the output will be this. And here is the input and here is the output. And when you make a request, so we are uh, generating the prompt. So in the prompt, first I'm including the input and output from these examples. And then finally, I'm including my actual prompt also. So I'm including the prompt also. So when I make a completion endpoint, when I make a request, it is going to generate the result like this. You can see. So this is the input and this will be the output. This is the input and this is the output. And this is what the uh, input I'm providing. And it is giving the response in that language. Right. So whenever the user provides uh, uh, input text, so it is going to convert that into uh, the corresponding uh, language. So what here the French is given, so it is English is converted into French. So how to do that? We have given some examples in the prompt. So there are some best practices we need to follow. First of all, be clear and specific. That is clearly articulate the task or desired outcome uh, in the instruction. Include context and background information. If necessary, provide context, background information or relevant details to guide the model to ensure a more informed and accurate response. So, Regarding what you are talking about, if you can give a context information or uh, the conversation background uh, information, it will help the model to get the uh, correct answers. Experiment with the instruction variants. So you can try different instruction phrasings or structures to define what works best for the particular task. So, so when you give, uh, you must have tried this in Google search also. When you search with a particular uh, statement, it may not work correctly. So you will try the other search text. So you same meaning or maybe same uh, text you will be trying with a different uh, set of uh, words. So the similar way, you can also try different variations of your prompt. Even small changes can sometimes significantly impact the generated content. Utilize cues and examples. You can include the cues or example sentences to guide the model in understanding the desired style, tone, or format of the response. Fine tune model parameters. Experiment with uh, uh, model parameters like uh, temperature and max tokens to control the creativity and length uh, of the generated response. So we can configure the temperature and the number of tokens that can be used so that we can control the creativity of the response. So I'll show you an example. Ensure appropriate length. Be mindful of uh, the token limit of the model. If the input is too lengthy, it may get truncated, affecting the context and quality of the generated output. Avoid unnecessary consecutive white spaces as they may be treated as token. So even if you use simply uh, the white spaces, it will be considered as token. So you have to be very careful while using the uh, uh, tokens or prompts because unnecessarily, uh, if you're not providing the instructions and cues or examples properly and simply including some statements which is not relevant so it will increase the number of tokens 
so that uh, it will affect the uh, quality of the result. So one important thing which I can uh, show you is an example here. So this is provided in the Microsoft Learn uh, uh, lab document itself. So you can simply go and uh, set the uh, Open AI. So here you can see the Open AI Studio. Here is a playground, chat playground available. Here you can go and try some of the examples. So this demo is more about how the uh, context and uh, the uh, setup is helping us to generate the accurate result. So simply in the uh, assistant setup, we can specify what kind of assistant it is. So you are simply saying that this is a system message. So you can simply go and uh, specify that that it is a helpful AI assistant. That's it. So you can simply save this. So you are saying that it is a simple AI assistant and you are not giving any specific roles to that. So the system is saying that it's a simple AI assistant. And now we are providing some list of things. So you can say in the chat session, we are providing this following prompt. So we have to create a list of animals, create a list of uh, whimsical names for those animals and combine them randomly. So we have we can simply provide this in the chat and then generate. So you can see it will be generating a result. Here you can see it is simply generates a list of animals as well as list of uh, whimsical names and then randomly it is combined them together, right? So this is what done. But now what we can do, you can simply go and change the system message saying that here instead of giving a very generic uh, system message you are telling that you are an ai assistant helping writing the python code so that means it is not just creating a list it is an ai assistant for generating the python code uh, complete the app based on provided comments so whenever we give the instructions or when we provide some instructions in the comments. So based on that comments, it is going to generate the Python code. So now you can see I'm going to provide the same instruction, but I'm going to convert this into Python comment because the hash is need to be provided. Otherwise, it will not consider as a comment. So I can copy this. You can see the same instruction is given. I'm copying it. I'm going back to this in the chat, paste it and run it. Okay, it's in, I think here I have not saved it. Okay, let me save it. Okay. Let me stop it. Okay, let me. <clears throat> okay, see here the same instruction I have given. Previously, I didn't save it. So, after you set the system message, you have to save it. So, after saving, you can see the behavior of the AI model is changed. So, previously, it was just a generating a list of animals, simply bulleted list was created and with the names and then a random combination of those. But now, because it's a role is changed, because we are telling that the AI model's role is to gen helping generating the Python code, it is now start creating the Python code. You can see it is declaring an array of uh, animals, declaring an array of names, and then writing the Python code to combine those names with the uh, animals, right? So it is generating the Python code. So instruction is exactly same, but the role of the AI model is defined 
uh, or it is changed by the system message. So you can see even the instruction is same, but the output is different, entirely different output you can see, right? So that is what we are saying. Even a simple word can go and make changes in the responses. Now simply what is a prompt engineer's uh, skill and role? As a prompt engineer is a critical role in leveraging generative AI e uh, effectively. This role involves crafting, refining and optimizing the prompts given to AI models to elicit desired prompts. The fundamental skills expected because he must have uh, understanding of natural language processing or natural language uh, uh, models. Creative writing and communication. So good uh, uh, understanding about the context. Uh, he must have good uh, knowledge about uh, how to write the prompt. A domain knowledge because if he is working on a manufacturing industry, if he's working on an um, uh, uh, what? some pharma or some other bank, uh, area. So he must have good understanding of uh, how the system works there. Then only he will be able to create the prompts accordingly. Because if if, if I'm an, a trainer, I'm not aware about what is happening in a manufacturing industry. So I cannot go and train the model uh, to generate the results uh, helpful for the manufacturing industry. Because a person who knows about the manufacturing industry can train the model or uh, uh, yeah, train the model to uh, generate results based on the uh, things happening in the manufacturing industry. So maybe some technical jargon, something can be used. Basic data analysis skills to uh, pre-process and structure data for use in prompts effectively. So he must have some good understanding about the data analysis because the data uh, is the largest set of data is used to pre-train the model and process the uh, model that is generated. Programming and technical understanding. So you must have a, a good understanding about the programming languages, mostly Python kind of languages. So how the system can be configured or how the system can be uh, fine-tuned uh, with, with programming languages uh, is very, very important for a prompt engineer because if the uh, existing model is not working as expected or it is not generating a results as expected, we can fine-tune the models using programming languages. So he must have a good uh, technical understanding and knowledge in programming language is important. His role is uh, primarily the prompt crafting, that is create clear, specific, and contextually appropriate prompts that guide the AI model to generate the desired responses based on the task or objective. So as we have mentioned, uh, creating the appropriate prompts is very, very important to get the expected results. Collaboration with a data scientist and AI specialist because he needs to uh, uh, interact with the data scientist and AI specialist to uh, sometimes he needs to uh, get the data from the data uh, scientist to train the model or during the fine tuning he needs to uh, use some data for fine tuning. And he also need to interact with the AI specialist to uh, choose the correct model and train the model with the, uh, uh, the appropriate uh, parameters, so like a temperature or examples or the cues or the tokens. So how we have to go and create or fine tune these models, an AI specialist can help him to uh, configure it. So he needs to interact with the AI specialist also. Performance evaluation is also important role because uh, whenever we publish the models, 
how this uh, how this model is generating the responses based on the text provided. So he needs to continuously evaluate the performance of these models. So if the response is uh, not as expected, he needs to change the parameters to uh, adjust the accuracy of this model. The responsibilities of a model, one is to follow the anatomy of specific best practices and also gen general best practices. Near perfect prompts can be designed by understanding the user's persona, research and practice uh, friendly collaboration. Test prompts to ensure it relays accurate responses and led to smooth user experience. Iterative testing, reworking and tuning are the part of prompt engineering. It means he need to continuously work on the same model to make it fine tuned. Use the feedback from users and stakeholders to improve the prompt design. That is continuous evaluation is required. And if the uh, stakeholders are expecting a different result or if uh, the expected result is different, then he needs to rework on this model. Collaboration with cross-functional team and data scientists, data, AI, ML engineers, UI, UX developers, or designers, and are they key success in designing ideal prompts? We have already explained the roles uh, that he has. He needs to interact with the different uh, uh, people. A need of frequent and regular performance analysis to keep it fit, efficient, and accurate. That is, continuous evaluation is required. A role keeps uh, itself informed of trends and latest development in the field of spectrum of related technology. So he must be uh, uh, a continuous learner that he needs to be aware about the changes happening in the industry and what are the new technologies uh, evolving uh, around this uh, technology. Now the prompt engineering techniques that we use, uh, uh, one is the N-short prompting which we have already discussed that while uh, uh, giving the prompts, we can also provide kind of uh, examples along with the prompt so that uh, uh, language models can learn to generalize and perform tasks more accurately. So it can be a zero shot, few shot or one shot uh, prompting. So here in the right side, you will be able to see. So in uh, few short prompting where n is equal to few means me, uh, means two or more examples you can provide along with the prompt so where a prompt is a write a short story about friendship so write a short story about the friendship means here examples you can give like a two childhood friends who lost uh, touch and uh, then unite uh, reunited uh, another one example is a group of friends going going on an adventure road trip. So there are some examples like we can provide. So the system will be able to understand, OK, what kind of uh, answer he is expecting. So one shot prompting means where the N is one. That is because we will be providing one example for that, like uh, describe a beautiful sunset. An example we can provide as a sky painted in shades of orange and pink as the sun uh, dipped below the horizon. So you can see it's an example uh, how we can describe uh, the sunset. So accordingly, the uh, system is also going to give another uh, response. Zero shot uh, prompting means no uh, uh, examples will be provided along with the prompt. So simply explain the concept of blockchain technology. So if you are asking something like this, there is no need for examples, right? So explain about the blockchain technology means there is no examples required to simply talk about the blockchain technology. Another technology or technique that we use is chain of thought prompting. 
a chain of thought uh, prompting technology technique is used to guide the output of a language model by iteratively building upon the previous context or response. So that means we will be using the uh, uh, previous responses or context to and add more information on top of that to generate the next result. The idea is to create a coherent and evolving narrative or conversation by extending the context step by step. This technique is particularly useful for generating long and structured pieces of text, like a dialogue generation or conversations. So whenever we want to generate conversations or uh, dialogues, then it will be very helpful. So objective, you can see, uh, create a coherent and uh, evolving uh, conversation or narrative that is, uh, the approach which we use is build a conversation step by step with each step extending the context from the previous one. So you can see in the right side, the example. So in the initial instruction, we are telling that the start the conversation between two friends discussing their weekend plans. So that is the context we are setting. So we need to generate a conversation and the uh, it will be generating a response the first iteration it will be giving the friend one is saying hey any plans for this weekend then ex you can extend the context so you can see the friend two is saying not sure yet maybe uh, catch a movie how about you so the next third one it means we are generating the response for that it is again the friend is saying sounds good uh, I was thinking of going hiking. So on top of that, it is we are extending more. That is hiking sounds like fun. Where are you planning to go? So that means from the previous uh, res response, we are generating the new text. So suppose we are adding the previous conversation uh, along with we are providing the next prompt. So the system is uh, extending by generating a new response. Right. So that means it is better for creating a conversations or dialogues, something like that. But similar thing is possible with generated knowledge prompting. So generated knowledge prompting is also is going to uh, generate the responses from the previous results. But generated knowledge prompting involves utilizing information generated by the language and model as a source or reference for subsequent prompts. That means the already generated information is again used as the prompt. It's a technique where the model's own output, which can be treated as a generated knowledge, is used to guide or influence its further responses. Means the model's output itself is used as the uh, input for the next uh, response. The objective is to provide detailed information or explanations on specific topics. It's not for conversations or dialogue generations. Approach iterate by adding more knowledge in each step to build a comprehensive understanding. It is useful for explaining the concept, definitions, or providing in-depth information on a particular subject. So understand. It is not used for generating conversations or dialogues. So right side, you can see the initial instruction given is explain the concept of gravity. So it will give a simple explanation about the gravity. You can see gravity is the force that attracts two bodies towards each other and so on. So and we can extend the context by adding one more line into that, that something like the uh, gravity gravity was first described by Sir Isaac Newton. So that is the extra statement we are adding. So along with the previous, we have added one extra statement and it will again expanding the same thing uh, by generating the next result that it's what keep uh, us anchored uh, to the Earth's surface. And again, we are extending by adding another statement like this. It is uh, making the the statement more detailed. So explain about the gravity 
it's first generated a simple statement and then we are adding uh, our own text then the system is generating another uh, response on top of that like this we can we are increasing or extending the uh, the 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 text so that is the response so that is generated knowledge prompting so here it is not generating the conversation or dialogues so these are the techniques that we use in prompt engineering so when we uh, uh, generate the responses it is very very important that we have to uh, provide some examples by providing examples we can generate the response by uh, uh, chain of thought prompting we can generate the responses that means by adding the uh, conversation dialogues uh, to the previous results or generated knowledge prompting which means adding more statements to the generated examples we can make it more detailed so some of the use cases where we use this uh, <clears throat> prompt engineering is language translation for converting from one language to an another language named entity recognitions primarily to identify the uh, object like a people organization locations from the prompt sentiment analysis for analyzing whether it is a positive or negative reviews or uh, feedback text summarization for generating a concise and coherent summary of a longer text it means if you want to create a summary on a uh, blog or article question and answering means you can generate the question and answering uh, for uh, a particular topic text classification assigning predefined categories or labels uh, to a piece of text based on the content as i have ex uh, explained like uh, some paragraph about the natural calamity you can give and categorize it as disaster recovery Cre provide a paragraph about the incident happened in sports and make it uh, categorize it as a sports like that language modeling it's generating coherent and contextually relevant text based uh, on given prompt which is useful for creating writing con content generation and more like uh, blogs articles emails and so on and very importantly now modern applications uses chatbots for chatbots also we can use this gpt models so uh, the modern generative ai models are used in different areas so this open ai playground as you uh, as i have shown in the azure uh, studio azure open ai studio you will be able to adjust the parameters here like uh, if you want to adjust the temperature temperature is by default set as 0.7 so if you want to increase or decrease the temperature value you can do that here so it will uh, affect the result so how the model is generating the response we can uh, change its uh, accuracy and uh, creativity by changing the temperature so here these are the different parameters we can configure in the models so that's it uh, from my side so now if you have any questions you can post your questions in the chat so i'll be trying to answer those questions
Okay, here is a question. Can we request an access to Azure Open AI Studio from personal email ID? Does it require a subscription from an organization? No, it's not require subscription from organization, but you have you must have a valid Azure subscription. It can be your personal subscription. Even I am using my personal Azure subscription and you you need to fill up a form. So when you uh, try to create an open AI service, uh, if it is not enabled in your subscription, it will ask you to submit a request. So they will evaluate uh, your uh, request and uh, provide uh, the the open AI service uh, to the to your subscription also. But there will be limitations for uh, uh, that. If it is not a paid subscription, there will be limitations that you can create a limited number of uh, results or sorry models. Can we host or deploy large language models on AWS clouds? Yes, uh, uh, Anusha, it is possible to create and uh, deploy models on AWS clouds also. Like uh, even open AI itself is now available in uh, uh, like Azure. You can also see the language models available in AWS also. Even it can be the open AI or the other language models. It can be like a Google Bard is available in Google Cloud. Similarly, the uh, AWS is also uh, using or uh, it will also allow you to deploy the uh, language models that uses the transformation uh, model. So open AI is availability. I need to check. I'm not aware about uh, in AWS whether it is available. I'm trying to configure Azure Open AI service in Azure and giving the below error. Yes, so this is uh, this is what I have explained, uh, Rahul. I have uh, already answered this. When you try to create the Azure Open AI for the first time, you need to make a special request to uh, Microsoft team. Uh, you need to fill up a form uh, specifying your subscription ID, your uh, name and other informations, and wait for a day. I think in uh, 24 hours or 48 hours, your request will be processed. So I, for me, it took just uh, 24 hours and it uh, approved the request and um, I, I was able to create the open AI services on the Azure subscription. OK, Rahul, OK, yes, uh, by default, Azure OpenAI is not enabled in Azure uh, subscriptions by default. It is a uh, it is enabled only on special requests. So you have to fill up that uh, form. See, Devi, but Outlook ID is not taken. So it, it, it should take because uh, I don't know now whether they have changed the policies because you can see I am using my Hotmail ID only. You can see here it's my Hotmail account ID only. And for me, the open AI is enabled in my uh, uh, account. So this is what I am able to create the open AI service. See, I'm able to create it. OK, so. <clears throat> it's possible. I don't know whether now they have changed the policies, but when I created it was possible with the, the personal account also. Uh, it is. Added to my MCT subscription, uh, which is my personal one. 